good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Jana Galistian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, actions against kidnapped soldiers contradict the requirements of international law, including the Geneva Convention. Baku's failed declarations are aimed at justifying the fire that is regularly opened in the direction of equipment carrying out rural work. Artsakh Ministry of Defense, Turkish soccer club Tigranagir has copied the coat of arms of the Republic of Armenia. The Golden Apricot International Film Festival will be held from July 9 to 16. Let's support Western Armenian television. Jana Galestian was born in 1948 in Stepanaget. In 1966, she graduated from local secondary school, number no. 8. She received advanced philological training. From 1964 to 2004, she was an actress at the Vahram Papazian State Drama Theatre in Stepanaget. And since 1984, she has been the director of the theatre studio. She has portrayed over 70 characters on stage and has received numerous awards. From 1980 to 1982, she taught at the Stepanakert Pedagogical Institute. She actively participated in the Artsakh movement and in the battles to defend the homeland. After the formation of the Enkar Defense Army, she was appointed Deputy Commander of the Central Defense Region of the Armed Forces. From 1999 to 2007, she worked as an advisor to the President of the Enkar. In 2000, 2005 and 2010, she was elected as a deputy to the National Assembly of the 3rd, 4th and 5th Convocations of the Enkar. She has who has been elected as the chairperson of the National Assembly Standing Committee on Defense, Security and Law Enforcement. She is the leader of the Democracy Faction and has no party affiliation. After the discovery of Tumanyan and Vavilov statements on the need for measures to preserve wild wet, it took a long time before the Erebunia Reserve was established. In fact, efforts to collect wild wet species and gather more information were underway in the region, but no specific steps were taken to preserve designated areas in the 1960s. Instead, concerns about extinction grew stronger. The establishment of the archive was, in a way, tied to the tragic fate of Vavilov and his followers. During the Great Patriotic War and the post-war period, there was a lack of enthusiasm for identifying, preserving and studying the genetic background of crops and their wild ancestors. Until the 1960s, Vavilov's call for the creation of a reserve to conserve wild wet was forgotten. The main reason for the delay is establishing the reserve was the scarcity of suitable land in Armenia, where both agriculture and cattle breeding were developing, and this was seen as an obstacle. However, Considering the scientific and practical significance of wild wet and other crops as living symbols of our present-day crops, particularly wet and bread, Vavilov's long-awaited dream finally became a reality. On March 27, 1981, the Minister of Soviet Armenia approved the establishment of the reserve, which according to Tumanyan is one of the most fascinating areas on the planet. The etymology of the name given to the reserve is interesting, as it is derived from the nearby Erebuni fortress. It's worth noting that the Erebuni Fortress is considered the foundation of today's Yerevan, established in 782, just as wild wet serves as the foundation of today's crops. The actions of the Baku authorities such as capturing Armenian servicemen from the territory of Armenia followed by false charges and unfair trials constitute blatant violations of international human rights law and international humanitarian law according to the Human Rights Defender of the Republic of Armenia. These actions are in direct contradiction with the UN Charter, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the requirements of international humanitarian law including the Third Geneva Convention, stated Anahid Manasyan the human rights defender emphasized that military personnel had been captured in Armenian territory during the ongoing armed conflict. Manasyan further highlighted that the fundamental right of Armenian prisoners of war are being threatened amidst the dissemination of Armenian hatred by the Azerbaijani side. The defender emphasized that Armenian prisoners held in Azerbaijan face constant risks of torture, degrading and inhumane treatment as evidenced by information collected by the defender's staff. 
The Minister of Defense of the Republic of Artsakh has issued the following statement. The information circulated by the Baku Minister of Defense claiming that units of the Defense Army opened fire towards Azerbaijani positions in the occupied territories of the Shushi and Karvajar regions of the Republic of Artsakh between 22.35 and 23.10 on July 8 is yet another instance of misinformation. The assertion made by the Baku Minister of Defense that their engineering work was disrupted as a result of our actions is entirely false. Thus, false statements from the Baku Ministry of Defense are aimed at justifying the ongoing firing directed at agricultural machinery. According to the Sputnik Armenian news agency, the Turkish soccer club Tigrana Gertsport has changed its name and coat of arms, copying them from the coat of arms of the Republic of Armenia. The club's new name is Mesopotamia Sports Club, and the new logo incorporates the coat of arms of the Republic of Armenia with slight modifications. The club has not yet issued an official statement, but the Turkish newspaper ID League has discovered that the new logo is registered on the website of the Patent and Trade office of the Turkish authorities. The 20th Jubilee of the Golden Apricot International Film Festival will take place this year from July 9 to 16, as announced by the Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sports. The festival will follow the established tradition of showcasing competitive films from various countries, as well as presenting the Yerevan Premier's program featuring films from prestigious film festivals such as Cannes, Berlin, Venice and others. Esteemed figures from the world of cinema will attend the festival in Armenia, sharing their expertise and art with sign fields. Over 2,000 Armenian films in different categories will be screened, and a special program dedicated to the 100th anniversary of Armenian cinema will also be featured. Among the festival, distinguished guest of honor will be the Darden brothers, who have won the Cannes Film Festival's Palm d'Or twice. Kazakh director Sergei Dvorcevo, a recipient of the Cannes Film Festival's Special View Program Award, and Joel Chapron, the Cannes Film Festival's chief consultant for the post-Soviet region. Western Armenia Television, dedicated to its principles and audience, continues its uninterrupted operations with fresh approaches. As you may already know, our television network refrains from excessive self-promotion. Instead, we primarily broadcast political and other content pertaining to the history, present and future of Western Armenia. We also provide information on various issues of importance. Additionally, we present the political transitions within the structures of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, the government, the national National Assembly and other entities in a transparent and accessible manner. Dear compatriots, with your support we can further expand and strengthen the capabilities of our television. Together we are strong. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.